And that is that, ladies and gentlemen. We are officially done with the month of July, which means we are going to go back and we are going to look through the whole entire month and determine whether the month of July was a good month in entertainment. And how are we going to determine that? Well, it's pretty simple. I'm going to go through some lists of things that came out in July or mainly talked about in July. Uh, they probably could have came out in June, but they got most of the buzz in July if it's a TV show or something like that. Or the bulk of the show was in July. And then give it a lemmy if it's good and a limey if it is bad. Now, full disclosure, I am not be able to talk about what happened at the end of July. I know this is going to come out at the end of July, but there's going to be no Jungle Cruise, Green Knight, or anything like that from the theater's perspective. Uh, basically, anything after July 25th, because July 25th, uh, spoiler alert, is when I am recording this. Because <laughs> uh, I have to get this over to my editor pretty soon. Just giving a good old explanation for it. But that doesn't matter. There's still a lot of other stuff that came out in July prior before today's date. So now let's go back through it and see how it turned out. Alright, and the first thing we're going to talk about are the movies. Now there is a lot of movies that is too much for me to memorize off the top of my head, so I am just going to go through them and we're going to talk about them individually as a little bit, but as a whole we're going to talk about the movies specifically for the ones that came out in theaters. So these are all the movies that came out in the theaters. Uh, we had the Forever Purge that came out, which I call the best and worst Purge movie of all time. Uh, Boss Baby, A Family Business, I've yet to see it so I cannot comment on that one. Black Widow. Uh, came out, uh, Space Jam, A New Legacy, Pig, a Nicolas Cage movie that had a limited release that I was able to see also, for the most part, besides Boss Baby, or movies that I have seen that I can't comment on, um, Escape Room, Tournament of Champions, Snake Eyes, and Old. Those are the main movies that really came out this weekend that most people saw, and again, that I saw besides Boss Baby. Uh, overall, pretty okay. Not the, not the best, not, not the best uh, month for it, but you know, this was more summer spectacular spe spectacle, if you will. It was all about the budget and the box offices. But as for like the money that these movies made together to really bring back the box office, you have to give it a lemmy because again, it just shows people want to go out and be together and socialize, even though they're strangers, and go to the theaters and watch a movie just to get out of the house. It's absolutely great. So again, we have to give a lemmy for how much money these movies have made. However, for the most part, most of these movies weren't good. Uh, like, some of them are fine, like Black Widow. <laughs> uh, like old. <laughs> but for the most part, these movies are just like, yeah, they're not that good. There's stuff to enjoy in them, but they're not really that well. So I would say for the movies aspect, as in the theaters, I will give it a lady as in like, because they could have just been better. They could have just been better. But a limey for the movies at the theater as a whole. Alright, moving on to some of the streaming service stuff. Now let's get into one that came out, that aired in June, but made bulk talk, and I think the second half of the episodes came out in July or very late June. I think like on the last day of June they probably came out. Is the new season too, of Too Hot to Handle. <laughs> uh, it's a little guilty pleasure of mine. I also really appreciate the mess that this show brings overall because the whole concept of the show is that they bring on these young, hot, single people that are very horny and just want to have sex all the time. They just really like using sex. Uh, and we're not using sex, but having sex and all that. And like, you know, it's basically the whole entire personality. And then they come in here and they're surprised by, oh, snap, I'm not allowed to have sex, please myself, or anything to that nature, because I'm here to build actual more, better connections for myself and the people that I want to be with. And it's just goes to show of the whole uh, lesson of love yourself more than, you know, to just give yourself up because your body is a pedestal and you should always be picky about who you sleep with. Now, if you are someone who likes to sleep around, more power to you, great on you. But I like that lesson that Too Hot to Handle likes to bring. And this season to me was much better than the previous season before. It also sticks the landing much, much better than the other one. Because in the first season, everyone won and they got to separate the money. And this one, there was a true winner. And I actually really, really did appreciate that. Also, the, uh, not the characters. Uh, I do think 
some of this was a little scripted, but this one actually felt really organic. But the people in the show, I liked a lot better than the first one. As for the first season, it took like four or five episodes until I was finally like, oh yeah, I like all of them. They're really good. But from the first episode, besides maybe one, but then by episode two, she won me over. <laughs> that I started to like everyone. And like when people left, I was actually really sad. Like in the first season, I was like, well, they just need to go. And then they would go, I'm like, good. And this one, I'm like, man, I get why they have to leave. But man, just let them stay. <laughs> like, and I was actually cheering them on, and they like broke the rules a lot. Sure, it gets a little redundant. It gets a little redundant of how the story goes. Oh, they break a rule, because in every episode, they break a rule by kissing or something like that. And they go, oh my god, we cannot tell anyone. Yeah, no, we're not going to tell anyone and all this stuff. And then, of course, they all get together, and Lana, the, the talking comb, goes, someone broke the rules. And they're like, so who did it? And then, of course, they finally go like, okay, we did it. It got really redundant after a while, but... I didn't mind it because I was actually really see because actually seeing the progression of all of them going, and I was like, man, I don't know who's gonna win. I, I truly don't like when they dropped the news that there is only going to be one winner. I was like, oh man, I don't know. They all really kind of deserve it, and it was just really, really, really good. It, they really brought it all together very, very well. Really, really did very, very good on this season from the editing room, from the people involved, direction. Narrator and of course Lana herself. Too hot to handle season two absolutely gets a lemmy. Now moving on to something else here. <laughs> the new iCarly reboot. I know this one also came out in June, but the bulk of the episodes are mainly coming out in July, because now we are nine episodes in, and I believe four through nine all came out in July. And now there's only about to be a few episodes in August, and we were talking about the whole season as a whole in August. Um, but it gets a line. And the only reason is, is that look, when it was on Nickelodeon, it was fine that there was no cohesive storyline. Because, you know, you just sit down, you turn on the TV, and for 30 minutes you turn your brain off, and you just go, eh, crazy kids. But now we're in a streaming service era, and most people are probably going to binge watch all this as it goes on. And, like, if they're going to pay extra money, you got to give them a reason to stick around. You can't just do, like, yes, these episodes come out weekly, but there's no cohesive storyline. Like, there was something big that happened in one storyline. Carly's birthday, and then like it all goes to crap, and it's never brought up again. They just move on to the next episode, it's a new episode, they're just sticking to the Nickelodeon formula. If this does get a season two, I need to see how the ratings are doing for it. I really hope they sit down and go, okay, so this is where Carly's going to start, and this is where she's going to end, and sit this back, alright, what crazy shenanigans do they get in for 20 minutes, or 20 to 30 minutes? for this episode because in a streaming era you need to have a cohesive storyline throughout the whole entire season not just for one episode which is why iCarly reboot so far gets a limey. Now let's move on to into some sports here and we are going to talk about the NBA Finals. Man what a finals this was. This is one of the best finals that ended in six games and congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks. You are the champions of the NBA. I will show my belt but y'all got your own belt already. <laughs> Uh, and every game was actually very interesting to go on, and it really seemed like it was going the Suns' way, but Giannis just would not allow it. <laughs> After game two, he was like, all right, no, I'm sweeping them in this way because they won four straight on from there. And every game was pretty close until around the fourth quarter-ish. I think there was only like one really big blowout game. But, I mean, just from the star stunt day, even LeBron had to show up for a game. Which was weird to see LeBron sitting at the finals instead of playing at the finals because I'm so used to him see him in the finals actually playing. But it, it is what it is. <laughs> but again, very, very good NBA finals, very entertaining stuff. So I'm going to give the NBA finals. We also had the Euro final happen here between England and Italy. Now, look, I'm not a soccer fan. Well, I mean, I'll watch it, but like, I'm not like going to be like, really go out of my way to watch it. I'll watch some of the big games like this in the World Cup and all that because, you know, they're big. Uh, but, man, this game was fun. <laughs> I mean, from the first two minutes in, England scores a goal, and now Italy is basically playing behind the whole entire time. And then when we, once we get into the second half, it's really a game of two halves because Italy scores it a little early on as well in the second half of the game, and then it's just one and one. And then we get to the overtime, and it's the kickout or shootout. I don't know what it's called. But man, it was just going back and forth, back and forth. Italy took the lead, and then England came back and t uh, tied it up. And, no, 
England took the lead, and then Italy tied it up, and then Italy took the lead, and then England took the lead back, <laughs> and then, and then, uh, then England took the lead back, and then Italy took the lead again. I'm being very confusing. I'm sorry, but either way, it, at the end, it came down to the young kid in England who's like really, really young. I think he was like one of the youngest players ever to play in the Euro final, and he kicks and the freaking goalie blocks it. You just see the kid's heart break because he basically felt like the whole entire country was on his shoulders and he let his country down. That's what it looked like in his eyes. Just a very entertaining game from start to finish. Really good month for sports, even though it wasn't one of the, even though it was just really the finals in the Euro. A lemmy for them. And now let's get into another show here, but from Disney Plus, let's get into Loki. Loki, if it has changed the Marvel landscape forever with how the timeline goes, and now we got our new, looks like our new Thanos and Kang the Conqueror. Uh, just a really good show from overall. There were some bad duds. Uh, there was two episodes to me that really stood out that I was like, eh, not that exciting, but still pretty good overall. Not really a bad episode here and there. Tom Hiddleston's great. Owen Wilson as Mobius is great. The whole cast is great. Uh, really looking forward to seeing all of them in future projects because I feel like they're all really big stars now, especially with how it's shaped up the Marvel landscape of it. Stuff's about to get really wild. Of course, Loki is going to get a lemmy. And now we wrap up with what was my favorite thing of the whole entire month, and that is the Fear Street trilogy. So obviously, it gets a lemmy. And yeah, it was just. This trilogy was just awesome to me. I just absolutely loved it. All three parts were just great. I was not a huge fan of two when it first came out because I'm just not a fan of prequels. I'm just like, well, I know everyone's dying except this person. But then once I saw three and like everything just came together as one cohesive story, I appreciate two so much more. And I actually rewatched all three of them again. And like, I'm like, man, I enjoy two a lot more now because like this, these parts are actually really important in the system to the rest of it. And it was really good that they were coming out all back to back to back and they didn't need to worry about no box office or like how people were going to perceive it. Like, no, we're going to make three movies. They're going to come out weekly and people will follow the story along. And yes, we did. And it was absolutely fantastic. If you have not watched the Fear Street trilogy yet, you need to make time for it immediately. It is the best thing about this. Actually, you know what? It doesn't even get just a lemmy. It gets a Straw Bella lemmy for the whole entire, entire trilogy. Like Straw Bella and Lemmy, they are the couple, and you know, Strawberry Lemonade uh, for that whole entire trilogy. Absolutely loved it. You know what? I just might watch it again. So that is it. That is it for the month of July. That, and as you can see, there's more Lemmys than there were Limeys, so therefore it is a good month for entertainment. So give yourself a round of applause, July. You absolutely smashed it. Really looking forward to August. A lot of good stuff are coming out. We got the Suicide Squad, and then um, I think the new John Cena movie on Hulu is also coming out. Just a bunch of other stuff that is heading our way in August. It's going to be really interesting to see how this shapes up next month when we do this again. If you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe to this channel as it will help me grow as a content creator. Leave your comments down below of anything that I might have missed that came out this month in entertainment, whether it be sports, movies, television, music, video games, all that stuff. I try to look for video game stuff, but I didn't see any buzz for anything. I saw the new Zelda came out, but I haven't really seen anything on that for online, so let me know how that was in the comments below. What were some of your favorite things that came out in the month of July in the realm of entertainment? We are here to talk about entertainment because we love the engagement of a bunch of people getting together to watch something absolutely magical. So that is it for me. Again, give a like and a subscribe and comment down below on anything that I may have missed. And I will see you all here next time.